For two years, we've been waiting to find out answers like, who are Ray's parents? Who is Snoke? Will we find out what's the deal with the Knights of Ren? What has Luke been doing for this time? And will they ever have a proper funeral for Han Solo? And now, The Last Jedi is out in the United Kingdom today, and I just went to the midnight release to go and watch it. But, is it any good? Yeah, it's good. So I'm going to do this review like I did two years ago. So first part is non-spoilers, so don't worry, I won't spoil anything in this section. And then later on down the line, I'll get into actual spoilers. If you want to go to the spoiler section, click the link in the description. It will probably be a longer section than this one. So, Star Wars, The Last Jedi. I don't know what to say about it, really. A lot of people have been saying that it is better or as good as The Empire Strikes Back or the best one since The Empire Strikes Back. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. I'm sorry, it really isn't. It's 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 good on its own. It's definitely, you know, because people were um, concerned that The Force Awakens was just a rehash of A New Hope. The Last Jedi, at least that's not a rehash of The Empire Strikes Back. It's literally, it is honestly its own thing this time. So you don't need to worry about that. There is a, a lot of comedy. You know, there are some really good funny bits. But a lot of people, including my friends when we were on our way home, were saying that there was too much comedy. And sleeping on it, I've kind of come to think, yeah, there kind of was. You know, it's like every five or so minutes there was some sort of bit of comedy. Which, you know, it, it, it's, it's good to have comedy in Star Wars because, of course, you know, you need to have fun to get through the fear of the war. But a bit too much fun. The film is two and a half hours long, which, you know, I thought it was fine. Yeah, there was a little bit of a moment, sort of like 15 minutes before the film finished. I was like, uh, okay, so when's this going to end? I'm kind of getting a little bit tired because, of course, it was the midnight release. I was getting a bit tired at that time. Let's talk about some of the characters. So, Ray, I mean, she's grown up a little bit, not much. Um, difficult to say about her. I mean, she definitely came into her own. But she wasn't in it as much as The Force Awakens, which was kind of odd. But I guess The Last Jedi is meant to be about her. Well, it is, but it isn't. So it's like, it focused a lot more on, like, the Resistance um, fighting the uh, First Order more than Luke and Rey's training. So I don't know. Next we have the performance from Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. And i got to say, that was probably one of the best performances of Luke Skywalker. I mean, from the be to begin with, he was kind of a bit of a, bit of a dick, I will admit. But then later on, he just started to become into his own and, oh, wow. That was an incredible performance from him, for sure. He's probably one of the highlights of that film. But then, that was meant, that was meant to be the case, of course. Then you got Finn and Rose. So, Rose is a likeable character. Um, I don't know. She, she's caring, for sure. Because, of course, her you know her, her moment with uh, Finn is like on Canto Bite, where they're going to try and find this, um, this guy... For a reason I won't say. Um, and she just has she has a bit of a caring heart, which is which is very nice. It's it's very nice to see somebody actually care about the things around them, considering everyone is like die, 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 die. Carrie Fisher, of course, died last year, which a lot of people were upset about, including me. She wasn't that important in it. Interestingly enough, she I, I liked her performance, but there wasn't much to her, to be honest. And this is and this is the thing because they said that the Last Jedi was meant to be one of the two films where she was meant to kind of have a bit bigger role. So like, because of course she was going to be in Episode Nine, and she was meant to have a like a major role in that. But of course that can't happen. So 
I'm kind of thinking maybe they purposely dumbed down her character. I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, I'll, 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 I'll miss Carrie Fisher, of course, but I'm a bit disappointed with Leia's character, annoyingly enough. Then, of course, you have Supreme Leader Snoke, you have Hux, you have Kylo Ren, and you have Phasma on the First Order side. We'll start with Phasma. Let's just get her out of the way. Complete utter trash. Um, she was... Pff, I'm going to say it, she was in it for five minutes. Like The Force Awakens, I'm sorry to say. Um, I don't know why she's, pro she's on the front, <laughs> the front of the poster when... She just does nothing! She does pretty much nothing. You also got Hux, which he kind of had a bigger role in this. And there was a moment in The, the, the Last Jedi um, where you kind of thought, wait, what, what, what's Hux doing? But I don't, I don't know what he was doing, but you know, but he's, he's, he's definitely very angry. He did a lot of shouting in that film, um, which kind of maybe makes me think maybe there's more to him than we think. Perhaps I don't know. Then you have. Let's let's start with Snoke before Kylo Ren. So Snoke, pretty terrifying to say the least. He's no Darth Sidious or uh, Palpatine. He's no Palpatine whatsoever. But he does look pretty menacing, and you know he has a very impressive like legion of his own. Um. But I kind of feel like his character was a little wasted as well. Which, again, we'll get into the spoilers. Um, I'm, I'm literally just trying to glass over the non-spoilers as quickly as I can so I can get to spoilers. Because there's a lot to talk about in the spoilers. Um, and then we'll get into Kylo Ren. So Kylo. He's kind of on the same path as Rey is. He's kind of conflicted in where he wants to go. Because, of course... Spoilers for The Force Awakens, but not really because that was two years ago now. Uh, of course, he killed Han Solo, his father. Um, so he's... Even though in The Force Awakens he might seem like he was glad to have killed Han Solo, there's still some conflicting thoughts in him. You know, he's kind of thinking back, oh, maybe I did the... Did I do the right choice in killing Han Solo? So it was interesting to see that sort of character development in Kylo Ren. Um, but then near the end, he started to get a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit two-dimensional. So, I don't know, I don't know. He was good to begin with, and then he started to get a bit worse from there, annoyingly. The visual effects, oh my god, absolutely stunning. They were fantastic. There's a moment, literally three quarters of the way through the film, um, where you just see this thing again we'll get to spoilers from different angles and oh god that was insane that was probably the best part of the visual effects absolutely hands down canto bite because i've been reading the um a canto bite novel uh and i heard that some of the characters from canto bite novel would be in the last jedi but i couldn't see them i really couldn't see them, which i was disappointed i was I was looking forward to seeing Ked Pin and Ang Lang and... Although I did see Yubala. I saw Yubala. Um, she was just sort of stood there holding a drink. But that was it. That, that, was, her only, that was her only appearance. Which, you know, that was you know, nice to see. But I kind of think, well, what was the point in making a whole book about these characters if we're not going to see these characters? So, whatever. The counter bite looked as I kind of imagined it would. It's... It looks nice, but it looks a bit desolate. So that, that's got that going for it, I suppose. Desolate, but nice. It is on like a desert planet. I mean, they kind of put a desert planet in every single film. I mean, yeah, you had it in episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. Uh, I guess not episode five. Uh, episode six, episode seven, episode seven. So there's been, a there's been a desert planet in every single film apart from episode five. I'm pretty sure there wasn't one in episode 5. Um, was there one in Rogue One? Uh, yes. Yes, Jeddah. Jeddah's kind of like a desert planet as well. So, what? What Star Wars obsession with desert planets? Let's also get on to the droids. BB-8, lovely as ever. I love BB-8. There was also that, that, I can't remember the name of it, 
But on the poster, you you saw that um, sort of like blackish um, Imperial droid. Why was he on the poster? He was in it for 30 seconds. 30 seconds? So... What? It's just some merch, isn't it? Of course it is. This, I mean, that's, this is the thing I'm kind of hating. Because it's the same with the Porgs. It's with the Porgs and with that droid. That droid was only on the poster and sort of promoted just to sell the droid toys. Same with the Porgs. The Porgs, personally, because people were saying, Oh, well... Just, just, just get the Pogs chance. They could be amazing. No, they were kind of crap. They were probably the worst thing of this film, honestly. They were, they were forced in. Absolutely forced in. Um, there, there were scenes with Pogs, and I'm just like, what are you doing there? Like, what is your sole purpose? The foxes. The foxes on crates. The, is, it, is it the crystalline foxes or something? They had an actual purpose. The Pogs. Did nothing. They had no purpose whatsoever just to be comedic. Yes, they were maybe comedic in one or two scenes. But apart from that, absolutely nothing. And their puppetry? Absolutely awful. The worst puppetry I've seen in a Star Wars film, honestly. That was horrible. There were some really good fight scenes as well that, um, in some cases, showed the consequences of your actions. Which I quite like to see, you know... When a character tries to take risks, knowing full well that it could hurt somebody else. Which was really interesting, because we don't really see that in a Star Wars film that often. You know, it's kind of just glossed over. Oh, you hurt some people? Oh, never mind. Oh well, let's just move on, shall we? But no, they actually showed the consequences of their actions this time. There was even a moment where, um, I don't know. Just Leia slapped somebody because they had gone too far. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Finally, let's move on again, still without spoilers, on the matter of did it answer any questions from The Force Awakens? Yes and no. Um, there was no... There was no, like... Oh my god! Kind of moment. But there were some moments like, oh, okay, that's quite interesting. So, I suppose you've got that to look forward to. It's, I was kind of expecting an oh my god moment, but... I guess then it would have been Empire Strikes Back, wouldn't it? So if I had to score The Last Jedi... Well, last night, I was thinking it might have been like a... Uh, 7.5, but... Again, sleeping on it, I think it'd have to just go down to a 7. There was good characters, but there were so many unnecessary bits. There was a bit too much comedy. Unnecessary, like, porgs. God, porgs were the worst thing, seriously. And, it, as I said, it answered some questions, but some of them, it's kind of just, you know, glossed over them. And I worry if we'll even see an answer to those questions. So I'd have to, yeah, I'm going to give The Last Jedi a 7. It is not the best Star Wars film since Empire. Absolutely not. Why critics are saying that, I don't know. It's probably just to get the views. Absolutely just to get the views because it is not at all. Is it better than The Force Awakens? It's on par, really. So if you thought The Force Awakens was terrible, then you're probably going to think The Last Jedi is terrible, honestly. Even though The, the Force Awakens... I mean, none of the films, apart from The Phantom Menace, are terrible at all. They're, they're not terrible. They're still really good. And I'm going to see uh, The Last Jedi again pretty soon. So yeah, that was non-spoilers. And now, let's get into spoilers, shall we? So fair warning, you've got five seconds before I talk about spoilers. So I'll just, uh, I'll just leave you to go. Yeah. I must apologise as well. I've got a bit of a wheeze today in my uh, breathing, so I apologise if you can hear my wheezing. All right, you're gone. You're gone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's nice. Who is Snoke? Seriously, who the frick is he? Because they kind of just. Ah. Oh! 
We had two years of build-up figuring out who on earth he is. And then they just kind of thought, you know what? We're just going to cut him in half and just ignore who the heck he is. They just killed him off. Now, unless we'll know in episode nine, but I don't think so. I think that sole purpose was to try and kill him off so that it made Kylo the supreme leader. And then, of course, we'll follow the Kylo story. So I don't think we'll ever know who Snoke is, honestly. I'm so disappointed in that. I really wanted to know who Snoke was. We, everybody debated it over the past two years. Oh, is he Darth Vader? Is he Palpatine? Is he someone else? Or is he Plagueis? No, we're not gonna know. And if we are gonna know, we're gonna wait another two years. But as I said, I don't think I'm gonna know because he's dead now. So, Ray's parents. I mean, I suppose we all should have just realised it wasn't anybody special. Well. We believe it's not someone special. Maybe that's what they want us to believe. They want us to believe that they are no one special. So, if you watch the film, Ray's parents are nobodies. Because there was there was that moment where she went down that um, that little hole with all the dark side power, and when she went through that mirror thing, whatever that that was, um, and it showed two figures appear, and then as the um, fog uh, swept away, you just saw herself. I thought that was alluding. To that she created herself from the Force. But, I don't know. My friend thought the same thing. He thought that that was what they were alluding to. But, apparently her parents were just nobodies. Which brings up another question. Because at the end of, Can uh, the end of Canto Bite, well it was in Canto Bite, wasn't it? At the end of The Last Jedi, if you, if you recall. You saw those kids and they had Force powers. They were Force sensitive. So did Ray come from there? Is she related to those kids? I mean, I, I can't imagine that she's their sister by any means, or any of their sisters, uh, or any of their siblings, whatever. You know, you know what I meant. But I don't know. Is there like a a force sensitive smuggling ring going on in Canto Bight? <laughs> I don't know. So if you're watching non spoilers. <sighs> that was, again, that scene three quarters of the way through where, um, what's Laura Dern's character? I don't remember her name. Um, where she took the ship and she went through Snoke's ship in light speed. I'd always wondered what that would look like. And it's really weird because yesterday I was watching a video like what if a meteor had crash landed on Earth at the speed of light? And then they kind of just sort of doing The Last Jedi, so that was really weird that I saw that, unless of course, something new that was in the film, and they put that up to, to show me. Ooh, trying to spoil me, are you? Oh, I didn't say in the non-spoilers as well, her character, Laura Dern's character, uh, I didn't like her, that's all. But she went out in a glowing, glowing? Glorified, awesome way, so... Eh, she kind of redeemed herself by the end, I suppose. As for Luke, well, I knew something was up when he came to Crate with a haircut because he looked exactly the same as the Luke that Ben or uh, Kylo Ren had seen many years ago. So, I don't know, I kind of could see that it was a trick. And when, of course, Kylo Ren asked the First Order um, and the new AT-ATs to shoot at Luke... That's me thinking, you know, there's there's no way he would have actually survived that. Je Jedi or no, there's absolutely no way he would have survived. He would have come walking out of that, at least. So, something was definitely up with that. And, of course, you know, he was just a Force apparition at the time. And then, of course, he disappeared. You know, he became one with the Force now. So, I guess that's what, that's what that was trying to allude with. So, yes, you do disappear if you're one with the Force. So, I guess, you know, all those Jedi that died in Episode 3... They weren't one with the Force. What happens to a Jedi if they just die? Do they just die like everybody else? Or, I don't know, do they still become entwined with the Force? They just can't become a Force apparition? Eh, who knows? As for Leia... What, what are they going to do for Episode 9? What are they going to do for Episode 9? They didn't kill her off. They kind of just, you know, let her be with the Resistance for their... 
moment of victory. And now, now they're going to come up with some sort of crap reason as to why she's not in episode 9. I mean, I know we can't help it because Carrie Fisher's dead, but I'm, I'm concerned. I'm really concerned. What are they going to do about episode 9? They're just going to say, oh, okay, you know, she, she died on the way there. Or, oh, she's just gone into retiring. She's gone into retiring during a war? What? And that moment, that, <laughs> that moment when they're all on the bridge and they all just get sucked out. So does Leia. Leia supposedly dies. I knew she didn't die. I think everybody knew she didn't die. Nobody, nobody in my cinema was all like, <gasps> Oh no, Carrie! Oh, Leia! Oh. Um, because I've seen the trailers and of course she was on crate. So I knew she hadn't died. So she was going to be in somehow. But... <laughs> That moment. I mean, we had we had to show that she had force powers, of course. But I kind of feel like maybe it was the wrong way to do it. It was kind of a bit cheap for her to just be like, "Oh, I'm I'm, I'm kind of unconscious, um, but oh, the force is gonna, gonna make me fly like a superhero back to the ship." Yes, it was a fun scene, I suppose, in a sort of serious kind of way. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to call BS on that, absolutely. I think the one thing that did bother me was the conflict between Kylo and Rey. So, for the first half of the film, Rey was kind of like, you monster, I hate you, go away, blah, 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 blah. And then literally, five minutes later, she's all, oh yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. And then they touch hands, and it's like they have a connection. What? You were hating him five minutes ago, and now you're like, Oh, I, I feel a connection to the Force. Oh, 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 oh. No, Ray. No. No, don't ruin your character like that. That was probably the one ruining thing about her character, I will admit. And of course, Kylo, well, he's Kylo. He's kind of conflicted, so he's going to kind of be all, Oh, yeah, well, yeah, let's touch hands, blah, blah, blah. But then, of course... Later on, as I said in my non-spoilers, he became two-dimensional. He was all, okay, I just want to kill everyone now. All right, fine, you do. You Just just become exactly like Snoke. Why not? Ugh. Screw it, right? Oh, I never did discuss about um, Del Toro's character. Um, kind of crap. Didn't like him. Knew he couldn't be trusted. Why on earth Finn and Rose thought they could trust him? I don't know. I kind of, I, I absolutely saw it coming, for sure. But, bit weird that he decided to give Rose back the necklace if he was like that. I mean, maybe it was just to, you know, make the ruse seem more believable, but what's the point of giving it back to her if she's going to die in five minutes' time anyway? Oh, I did find that scene funny as well. <laughs> Literally the first scene with Ray and Luke, and Luke just throws a lightsaber over the edge. Uh, that it's like two years. We've all been waiting. Like, oh, oh my god, what's gonna be his first words to Ray? Oh, how is he gonna react? Is it gonna be Ray? Oh, is Luke gonna be like, oh, that's my daughter? Oh my god, oh wow, oh wow. No, just throw throw lights over the edge. Go away. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It was funny, but a bit disappointing that that's how they decided to go with it. But never mind, eh? It kind of it kind of takes the end scene of the Force Awakens and just kind of tarnishes it. It doesn't make it as mysterious anymore, knowing full well what's going to happen two minutes later. Also, they said that they were going to do like a, a funeral section for Han Solo, but they never did. They barely even talked about Han. Oh yeah, there was like a few moments where they thought back to him. But it wasn't as impactful as they were advertising it would be. Because, you know, the director was like, oh yeah, there's going to be a, you know, uh, there's going to be a big presence on Han Solo being dead. No, there wasn't. Stop lying. Why are you lying? Why are you making this stuff up? Stop. And with Phasma, yeah, disappointing. They wasted her character. Yeah, they showed her. Because, of course, they're only going to show her face if they know that she's probably going to die. Although, they didn't really show her face face. They showed a part of her face, which... I don't know, was that meant to show that she was like, just show that she was human or what? I, I don't know. I really don't know. 
I mean, it would have been interesting if we saw like a deformed face underneath there, but we just saw a regular human face. So, alright, well, well, she's supposedly dead now. I'd be surprised if she did f uh, survive that fall into the fire pit, but can't imagine she would have, really. So, yeah, The Last Jedi, it took the questions we've been wanting to know the answers for so long, and they kind of just threw it all away. Oh, who has raised parents? Oh, that, that nobody. Who's Snoke? Oh, we'll, 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 we'll never know. Oh, what about the Han funeral? Oh, there, 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 there isn't one. Oh, okay. What about the Knights of Ren? Oh, well, well, maybe episode nine. Oh, we'll see. Because it bothers me, because I remember reading somewhere that apparently they didn't know the answer to raised parents, and they didn't know who Snoke was at the time of making The Force Awakens. And it shows in The Last Jedi for sure they didn't know, they just made it up. Oh, I am, I am somewhat disappointed. It's, it's as I said, it's a great film, but I am still somewhat disappointed with the answers I got. I'm gonna go watch it again for sure, like two two more times. But come on, why'd you do this to us? You've got to seriously try and redeem it back with Episode Nine now, Lucasfilm. You really do. So that was my review of the Last Jedi. 7 out of 10. Sorry, as I said, not the best Star Wars film. Not the worst. Absolutely not the worst. The worst is The Phantom Menace. If I had to place The Last Jedi somewhere, definitely better than Return of the Jedi. Absolutely, because of course Ewoks. I, I don't know. Probably, I'd put it in third place. It would probably go Empire Strikes Back. Rogue One. Actually, no, probably fourth place. Empire Strikes Back, Rogue One, New Hope, Last Jedi. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I put it. But I guess we'll see in two years' time. We've got the Han Solo movie coming up next year. I think we're having it next year. I was kind of hoping they were going to show a trailer, like, right before the film. But, I don't know. We've got five months and we've seen nothing. So they better hurry up and, and do it. So anyway... That was my review of The Last Jedi. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you're going to go see Last Jedi and you uh, decide to watch the spoilers, well, why? You've just ruined the entire film for yourself. But otherwise, I'll see you next time. And uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>